Bonjour, my wonderful people. This is your girl, Lia Poule, your favorite hand model. And welcome to my Cosmos. So, today we're going to talk about... Is it blurred? Ah, we're good. Okay. So, today we're going to talk about how I started hand modeling. But before being a hand model, I was doing so many other things. So, let's just go back in time. Everything started on June 22nd, 1986. It was a Sunday, full moon, and that was the very first um, National Music Day in France. And instead of partying, mom was on labor. I feel sorry for her. Okay, I'm just kidding. Let's not talk about my birthday, but... So before being a hand model, I was doing so many things. I feel like I had like 20 lives or something like that, or 30s. I don't know. I was a lot into the dance world. So I was a dancer, performer, dance instructor, choreographer. And I also own a dance studio in Brooklyn. So that was like years ago. And I graduated in graphic design, so I was also a graphic designer, something that I still do, especially um, more as an artist, like illustration, uh, art, because, and I still do art, I, I do art um, on the side of hand modeling. Uh, what else did I do? Journalism. So I interviewed all of those hip hop, R&B, soul music artists that were Performing in Paris, I was like so blessed for that. I got the chance to meet so many different artists, my favorite rappers, my favorite R&B singers, and so music people. So that was really, really cool. Um, what else did I do? I forgot. I don't know. Other stuff. Did I do anything else? Dance, journalism, graphic design modeling I don't know anyways what was my call for modeling um, I think like a lot of young girls I wouldn't say like every little girls but like a lot of them uh, I wanted to be a model because people were telling me oh my god you're so pretty you're so pretty and I thought I was pretty even if people wouldn't tell me uh, but that wasn't even an option because you know I was born and raised in Paris but I have an African background my parents are from Cameroon and um, you know growing up African background, Christian background in a project like modeling wasn't an option at all like forget about it so that was just a dream but I you know that's a dream that I kind of buried and I had like few opportunities as a teenager uh, to start modeling and I didn't pursue at all but late 20s, I have a very good friend of mine who wanted me to participate to her photo shoot. Um, she's a photographer. And I said yes. At first I was like, oh, I don't know. Are you sure you want me? Like I was super shy and stuff. Um, but I ended up doing it and I loved it. And she was like, yeah, you should really do modeling. Like you, you're like natural in front of the camera, blah, 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 you know. And... Um, then I moved to New York and that's not something that I really thought about but a few years later I was like you know what I'm in my 30s it's now or never and that's not true it's not now or never you can be in your 40s 50s 60s 70s like who cares but that's what I thought at the time so I just didn't know how to start and where to start so I just um what did I do? Oh, I went on those pages, uh, Facebook pages, TFP, uh, where you can meet uh, aspiring models, photographers, videographers, makeup artists, hairstylists, um, and all of those people need to be their portfolio. So they're more or less professional, but it's a good start because it's free, like it's a trade, you know. 
So you you can say that you have a project and you're looking for like you know whatever you need you need photographer makeup artist maybe a hairstylist and people like answer if they're interested and then you know you talk to them and you create your project. So I started like that and it was okay you know I wasn't like the best model and I've never been like um, that person who was like posting like whatsoever on social media like I'm so confident and stuff I, I didn't do that that wasn't my style because I was very tomboy so I wasn't embracing my femininity so it wasn't for me so posing in front of camera and for where I come from it's not good to be like obsessed with your image and to be like super self-confident like it didn't look good back then even if nowadays like everybody's talking about self-love self-acceptance self-esteem self-confidence which are amazing but where you grew up where it was like considered as a sin arrogance um selfishness like you just didn't do it so it was really hard for me i had to work on my posing on you know looking more feminine um, showing some emotions with my eyes, with my body language. At least the good thing is that I was, I was, I am a dancer, considered dancer, even if I don't dance professionally no more. But I didn't know how to pose and how to create angles. And you know, as a dancer, you know how you look when you do like whatever posing. But I was a hip hop dancer and you know, dancer, but like I wasn't like very girly dancer. But I could still manage that. But the facial expression, especially the eyes, was like really, really hard for me. And so I did few TFP and I was using those pictures. <laughs> and I was using those pictures to and I was using those pictures uh to submit them to some websites, casting call websites, which is crazy. Because when you're looking for a regular job, you don't need to pay for that. But when you're looking for gigs as an artist, a creative, a performer, you have to pay uh, monthly fees or annual fees. And this is so not okay. I'm so against that. But anyways, so I started my very first gig in that new world was me being a background actress. Actress. I'm so not an actress. But anyways and doing background so that was a first step into that industry and that was very helpful so i did that for a few months so i could understand more about this world and the thing is with background acting even if you don't do much but if you look really proper i wouldn't say like you look pretty because with makeup you can just do everything in outfit but if you look proper like if you're standing out like you have good chance to be on camera and i understood that from day one so i was like first of all i'm pretty pretty it helps but i was always making sure that you know my hair was on flick my makeup was on flick my body was on flick my outfit was on flick so i was a lot uh shot and that was really great because it helped me building like um video portfolio that i posted on social media and my website and i could also attach them you know when i was sending my application so that was really helpful and then i did this photo shoot with josephat amazing photographer and we had like so many good pictures together and i asked him no that's so not the story rewind so my very first <laughs> My very first uh, background acting job was in Brooklyn by the Brooklyn Promenade. I forgot for what show it was, but I met this guy, like number one hand model in New York. And we spoke and he was looking at my hands and was like, oh my God, you have like nice hands. And he told me that he's a hand model. And I was like, what? Is that a thing for real? Like for real, for real? And he's like, yeah, that's how I'm making my money. I've been doing that for over 10 years now and I was like oh wow very impressive so he didn't tell me much about you know how to get into the business or like you know give me some tips he just told me take some pictures and I was like okay 
and submit your application to those websites that you have to pay for so i was like okay cool and then i remember and i was like oh yeah i was looking at my hands and i was like yeah they cute so i can do something with those fingers and nails i met few photographers didn't really like the pictures until i met joseph this guy is a dope amazing photographer like the photo shoot was amazing and i asked him if we could take a few pictures of my fingers my hands my arms he was like oh yeah sure and those pictures were so good to me at the time like his job was amazing but like the way i was posing wasn't the best because i didn't have any experience you know so i do what i could those pictures really helped me to get jobs actually so that's how i started and uh, what was the very first job that i had i think that was for bed bath and beyond and that was really cool because uh, they told me that they received like 900 applications and they were like six people to make the decisions and they told me that my hands like stood out that i had the best hands and like everybody like wanted my hands and no one else hands and i was like oh my god like at the time i was like oh my god so special now i'm just like yeah of course like what else who else uh but um <laughs> <I'm> so cocky <laughs> it's ridiculous but it's funny at least to me hopefully you're laughing with me if not uh too bad uh so uh yeah bed bath and beyond the price wasn't crazy, but to me it was like way better for like whatever I've done for just one day working. So I was very happy and very not very confident because that was my very first job that I booked myself as a freelancer model. And they liked working with me, so we've, wor we've worked quite a few times together. And then COVID happened, so business shut down. It was really bad but lucky me right before covid happened i met this art director that i love working with uh, her company i'm not gonna tell you her name but her company name hello corvus do you know what corvus means you you spell it like c-o-r-v-u-s so now i'm just gonna school you because i want to look like so intelligent because i took one year of latin when i was a teenager so Corvus is crow, you know, so I hope you will sleep more intelligent thanks to me. Uh, so I'm going to tell you her name, Jamie. Uh, amazing. So we worked together right before the pandemic and she really loved working with me. But then pandemic happened, so we had to stop working. And she was always calling me back because she was like, I love the way you work. I love your hands, so we're just going to keep working together. So she really helped me building my portfolio, which was amazing. And funny thing is like, um, I think I work with another brand, but I forgot. All of those three uh, people I've worked with, they were always so sure that I was booked all the time because my hands are so amazing and beautiful and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying blah, 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 because I'm just like, oh, whatever. I just don't want to give myself way too much compliment in front of the camera. But they all thought that I was always booked all the time and they didn't know that I didn't have any agent, that I was like uh, struggling because when you enter to casting calls, you have like 10,000 people answering to the same casting call. But you know, when you enter to a casting call, it's not that uh, you're not good or whatsoever. It's just like they have so many applications that they might just not see you unfortunately you know and it's not that you didn't stand out enough it's just that when you receive six nine hundred applications and you don't really have a way because it's from a website to stand out it just happened like you know you might you might be skipped but it's not about you it's just life so uh blah, 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 this and so yeah that's how i started and as i said then covid happened so like shut down the business but then i was taking advantage to take other pictures on my own and 
create like a very nice portfolio with the pictures that I already had and it was like working pretty well because you know I told you graphic designer so I could build my portfolio myself and do something with a really nice design so I didn't have to pay somebody to do it I paid myself if I can say so because this is a business and I reached out a few agencies and the funny thing is the agencies that I reached out uh, didn't answer to me at first because I was just like sending pictures like oh whatever you know like they might not answer and then I'm like okay what's the point for emailing people not expecting positive answers like that's not me like I'm a winner so I don't do that so I designed my portfolio and I sent to uh, the different agencies and I had uh, two positive answers so I was very happy because um, the, um, when you do hand modeling, especially not just at the beginning, when you do hand modeling, you don't need to sign an exclusive contract. Uh, so I could sign with different agents, which was pretty good. And then I signed with, along the year, two other agents. So I started to, I started with agents last year. Um, and before that, I was doing two years of freelancing. Yes, is that right? Yes. And I'm telling you, having agents is a life changing, even if you have to pay them 20%, but it's worth it because, um, because they have a very nice roster. So it's really helping, but it's not because you have an agent that you are gonna get jobs. It's also, you also have to work for that. But having an agent is really a plus and it's really worth it to pay them the 20 person that they deserve. But I can tell you that I haven't taken care of my hands the way I'm doing now, of course, because now it's a job. But when I was younger, people, they were like kind of laughing at my hands. Why well, they were pretty pretty, but they were always saying like, oh my God, you have such long fingers. You should be a pianist. Everything was like, the hell? Like, what? <laughs> Whatever. So, no, I never thought about being a pianist because I have long fingers. But people were making that joke slash complimenting me on my hands and fingers and, you know, like, the fact that my skin is smooth. Um, even if it can be pretty dry, especially, like, during the winter. Um... Yeah, and you know, like since my skin is thin over here, so yeah, it can be wrinkly if I if I don't drink enough water, and if I don't moisturize enough, it can be pretty bad. Not pretty bad, but not good enough for me. And I remember, like people were always like saying, "Oh my God, your hands are pretty," blah blah blah, your arms are pretty, and I was like super happy and super grateful, of course. But I had an addiction. I was biting my nails, and Biting also like, you know, like the skin around, like at the age, I was biting the age of my nails and that was looking pretty disgusting, but I didn't care because I just love biting my nails. And, um, but I was still proud, proud, you know, I was just like, yeah, they're still nice. And I remember people were saying like, that's such a shame because you have such beautiful hands, but your nails are just disgusting, which was very true but I didn't care because I was me. And one day I remember I was around 17 years old in high school. Um, I don't know, somebody was asking like, who has pretty hands? And I was like, oh, me, me, me. So cocky and confident. And this girl was like, you, what? Your hands are disgusting. Look at your nails and like bleeding, like the edges are like disgusting, bleeding with like the skin peeling off. And I was like so embarrassed and ashamed. And I look at my nail and I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty disgusting. And since I have like a huge ego, I was like, never ever again. So that's how I start. I stopped biting my nails while I used to love that. So I stopped biting my nails out of ego. That's bad, but that's good because sometimes ego can help you like that. <laughs> and I remember in my early 20s, like early 2000s, no, not early 2000s, not that old, mid 2000s, difference. 
um, like guys in Paris used to shame women a lot. Youth, they still do, and pretty much everywhere in this world need to change that. And you know, the culture in France is very different from the American culture. So back then, women weren't that much into uh, nails stuff like that you just put nail polish or you don't really care but it's not it wasn't a big thing as it was or is here i think it has changed a lot with the new generations in france but back then you didn't go to the nail salons at the end of 17 to have your nails done you know you just don't do that so men were always talking about like oh my girl has to have pretty hands if she doesn't like i can date her like she has to be like super pretty but she also have to be on flick to the nails and i was like you look like i'm not even gonna say the world because that's very disrespectful but you look like right and you allow yourself like judging women like who are you but unfortunately, it still had like an impact on women, you know. Uh, sorry, I was watching. Uh, who's texting me? Sorry. There was a time I was training as a hip hop dancer um, and were training at the train stations, at the malls, at night, stuff like that. That was really cool. I love that era of my life. And even if I was very tomboy, but I was still very pretty and I had like. I always had like men around but I didn't care or I pretended not to care I don't know I don't remember but to me what was important was the fact that I didn't want to give men too much credit but it was still important to me that men still looking at me even if I was tomboy like I had to be the tomboy that you're looking at and one day I remember one night after the, the session um, like this guy out of nowhere just like grabbed my hands just to see if I had nice hands and I was taking care of my hands not as much as today but I was taking care of my hands and I started biting my nails I learned my lesson and this guy was like oh oh wow you have very nice hands at least and like your skin is soft and I'm like oh who, who are you I dare you and I cursed him out but I'm not gonna say what I said but deep down inside I was like oh my god like thank god like I take care of my hands because like this guy would shame me even if it's not normal but you don't want to be shamed you know in front of everybody and men shouldn't do that at all and once again, as much as I was a tomboy, as much as I didn't care, but I care about my image, not for people, but for myself. But I just didn't like the fact that I answered to some stigmas that I hate, like, you know, like, like the mind trick games that men are playing, you know, like, yeah, even if I don't care about you, but your opinion still matters and... I don't know I just didn't like that I was really mad at him and mad at me but I was very happy that my hands were like looking fine and that taught me something like you don't know what can happen in life just be ready so yeah um, yeah that's all for me uh, I know I didn't give you any tip yet but it's coming I was just like explaining to you where I was coming from um, how I started my hand modeling journey and I have so many other plans that I'm not going to tell you much about. Um, I think on the next video, I'm going to show you and tell you. Um, no, that's not true. Like in further videos, I don't know which one. But I will show you which brands I work with. And like I'm going to tell you like my experience which, working with those brands. For those that I remember, like I'm not going to tell you like all of them but i'm gonna pick up two of them and yeah i will just tell you like my modeling experience because i think it's pretty cool but anyways that's all for me thank you so much for watching uh i truly appreciate um feel free if you want to share or ask questions like you can like comment below um don't forget to like subscribe uh by like hitting like the whatever button below and like uh, you can also hit the bell which is somewhere informations 
in the captions I also like you have my uh, Instagram website email address uh, and that's all for me thank you I'm sending you a lot of love a lot of positive energy uh, a lot of bisou 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 and don't forget to drink water mind your business but still take care of the others but you first okay bye I'm out this is